Hi and welcome. Welcome to the second module about GPU computing with CUDA. This module is divided in four parts. In the first part, uh, I will uh, give you a broad overview of GPU computing with the CUDA. In the second part, I will uh, give you all the basic concepts in CUDA to write your first program. In the third part, we will write step by step a CUDA program, our first uh, CUDA program. And finally, we will look at the more advanced concepts in uh, CUDA in the last uh, fourth part. But let's start with a broad overview of GPU computing. There are four main points to take with you after this lecture. First, general purpose computing on GPU, GPGPU, requires the reformulating computational problems in terms of graphics primitives and using graphics, graphics APIs. Second, since 2006, GPU computing frameworks allow us to go beyond GPGPU by bypassing graphics API and ignore the underlying graphical concepts. Third, there are three major approaches for programming GPUs. We can choose between low-level compiler directives and library approaches. Finally, CUDA is a framework for parallel computing on NVIDIA GPUs based on extending C and C++ for programming GPUs, and it's the framework we will be using in this course. As a first step in this lecture, I would like to give you an historical perspective about GPU computing. The first NVIDIA GPU, the GeForce 256, was released in 1999. However, there was no public API to program such a GPU. For this reason, it was impossible to a user like us to program a GPU. We need to wait until 2003 to have the first NVIDIA GPU that can be programmed using graphics API like OpenGL. In 2006, NVIDIA introduced CUDA that allow us programmers to write code without using graphics API by instead using parallel computing paradigms. While we'll work a little bit on OpenGL in the next module, we only focus on GPU programming with the CUDA in this module. As we saw in the previous slides, GPGPU was introduced first in 2003. GPGPU is the use of GPU to perform computation uh, in application traditionally handled by the CPU. Example of traditional CPU application are computer simulation in fluid dynamics, weather forecast, biology, and so on and so forth. GPGPU emerged in 2003 with the introduction of two key features that allow for general purpose computing. First, program programmable shaders, and second, support for floating point operation on a graphics processor. Before that, GPU didn't have programmable, sh programmable shaders and used fixed point arithmetic. Since 2003, we were able to program a GPU. But what was the problem? The problem was that we could program GPU for solving general purpose problems only by using graphics APIs like OpenGL or DirectX. For this reason, if you want to program your simulation code to run on a GPU, you have to program it as it were a graphics application using graphics primitives and graphics APIs. We will see in the next module that graphics API provide a lot of function for matrix and vector calculation. So we could use this operation when designing our general purpose application. In 2007, NVIDIA introduced CUDA to bypass graphics API and ignore the underlying graphical concepts. We could simply program in C or C++ and use threads for making our code to run in parallel on the GPU streaming processor. CUDA uses concepts from high performance computing like threading and shared memory programming instead of using graphics API or concepts. And it doesn't require explicit conversion of data to a graphical form. When it comes to programming GPU, we can choose uh, among three different approaches that differ by the level of control they give you on the hardware and by the number of lines of code you need to write. The three approaches are low level, compiler directives, and library approach. Low level approaches like CUDA give you more control on the hardware. To program the same algorithm, higher level approaches allow to write less code than low level approaches. One important point to mention is that you don't need to commit to one specific approach over another one. You can mix, you can mix different approaches as they can interoperate together. NVIDIA CUDA is one of the most popular frameworks in the low level approach category. CUDA is a parallel platform created and owned by NVIDIA. 
That also means that CUDA is a proprietary framework targeting only NVIDIA computing platform. Simply, there is no CUDA for GPUs that are not NVIDIA's. Instead, OpenCL, be careful here, don't confuse it with the OpenGL that is for graphics. OpenCL allows us to program a whole bunch of GPUs and accelerators, like FPGAs and GPUs. OpenCL specifies a programming language based on C for programming a broad range of GPUs. CUDA and OpenCL have many concepts in common, but they do use different names just to make it more fun. Here you can see a table with uh, some translation from CUDA terms to OpenCL terms. In the compiler directive approach, the programmer introduced the, introduced in the code annotations, called also compiler directives or pragmas. They are used to tell the compiler which part of the code should be executed on the GPU. You can see an example in the, in the code presenting the right part of the slides. We add a compiler directive to the code using the pound symbol, telling the compiler to divide different parts of the loop among threads and run them on the GPU. There are two main compiler directive approaches, OpenCC and OpenMP. To tell you the truth, I'm not really a big fan of this. It feels like more GPU programming for dummies. However, I'm also guilty for having published few papers on OpenCC performance. So I guess, I guess I'm not the right person to tell you about this. There are also libraries that can be used for, pro, for GPU programming. The two most popular libraries are Trust and Array, and Array Fire. Trust is a C++ library and is basically a C++ standard template library for GPU. Also Array Fire is uh, rather popular. Array Fire provides several functions with the interface to the most popular programming languages. In this module, we are going to use CUDA. A legitimate question you, uh, you might have is, why is that? Well, there are two main reasons. First, CUDA is an interface providing all the basic concepts we need for basic GPU programming. In fact, later on, we can move to higher level interface or to OpenCL rather easily. The second reason is rather obvious. It is that CUDA provides the best performance on NVIDIA GPUs. And in this course, we are going to use NVIDIA GPUs. OpenCL for NVIDIA GPUs is implemented on the top of CUDA. So yes, so for sure we are not going to, to get a speed up when using OpenCL on NVIDIA GPUs. In most of the system we are using in, the, in this course, CUDA is already installed. The CUDA framework has three main components. First, the driver, that is a low-level software that controls the graphics card. Second, the tooltip, toolkit that includes the MVCC CUDA compiler, among other things. And third, the SDK, that includes code, examples, and utilities. CUDA provides two APIs, the Runtime API, that is rather simple, and the Driver API, that is a more low-level API. One important point is that these APIs are mutually exclusive. You need to decide which one you want to use. In this course, we will only use the Runtime API. Yes, we are low-level programmers, but there is a chance also to go even lower by using the CUDA driver API. When we compile our first CUDA code, you might have noticed that we ask you to use the flag minus arch, or also minus minus GPU minus architecture. But why is that? With this flag, we provide the compiler with the virtual processor architecture of our GPU. A virtual processor architecture is nothing else than a set of CUDA programming features that our GPU supports. For instance, in this table on the right part of the slides, you can see the feature of uh, different virtual processor architectures. CUDA was born as an extension to C, C, C and C++ languages. The MVCC compiler is an LLVM-based uh, CC compiler. In addition, there are also Fortran and Python interface, if we want to use them. However, especially the Fortran interface might not support all the CUDA features. In summary, in this lecture, we touch upon four main points. First, GPGPU initially required reformulating computational problems in terms of graphics primitives using graphics APIs and concepts. Second, GPU computing frameworks like CUDA allow us to bypass graphics APIs. 
and use more HPC interface. Third, there are three major approaches for uh, programming GPUs, low-level, compiler directives, and library approaches. Fourth, we are going to use CUDA, that is a framework for parallel computing on NVIDIA GPUs. In the next lecture, we will dive in CUDA, look at uh, all the basic stuff we need to know about CUDA programming. We are done with this lecture and talk to you in a bit.